They might call themselves a farm, but there's no sign of animals on this trading estate in Oxford. And while there are no pigs in this pig pen, they are producing meat. This is the beginning of our process, and just like on a farm, we start with that small piece of meat. From that meat, scientists pick out the cells that they want to replicate. So you've identified your cells. What happens yep. next? So the next part is that we make sure we've got just the pure muscle and the pure fat cells. So we want to only grow the parts of the animal which we want to eat. So none of the gristly bits, tendon, cartilage, ligaments, etc. When the cultivated meat cells leave there, their biology, their genetics is, if you like, just right. But how does that actually become a piece of meat? Stage two. This is the next stage of the process. It's essentially a mixing tank, and this is the first time those cells will have come from a flask or a, a, a petri dish and ended up in something that resembles a production process. What is actually in there? So in there, we have some beef cells at the moment, some beef muscle um, stirring around, and then we've got our own culture media formulation, which is the nutrition for the cells, it's food. So are those cells growing in there all the time? They are, exactly. So we'll, um, we'll bring those through the process from smaller scales up through larger and larger. As if you would, uh, on a farm, you move the herd from a smaller pen to a bigger pen. After three to four days, the cells multiply and grow to form small lumps of muscle tissue before being transferred to this stainless steel tank where they continue to swell. And when it's grown up in there, is, is it look, you're looking like a fillet steak? I mean, what, what's actually coming out? We're not quite at the stage of fillet steaks yet. We'll, we will be there in years to come. Uh, but what comes out of the process is similar to mincemeat. Here we go. That is very nice. Mm. That is great. It's got some seasoning in there. I can taste some herbs and spices and very nice texture as well. How do you think your customers will react to cultivated meat? I mean, something that was essentially grown in a lab. It would certainly take a little bit of, of education because it's new and it's something that we're not used to seeing. And, um, and at the moment, it feels like one of those very sci-fi things that, uh, that people can't quite believe is really happening. But what do the public think? I would try lab-grown meat because I'm conscious of how farming meat is affects the environment. That's a hell no from me. <laughs> I'm going to eat beef. I'd rather it be out in the field eating healthily. I just don't like the idea of it. I think it sounds weird. But with the enormous global meat industry facing growing concerns over its greenhouse gas emissions, cultured meat companies and their investors are betting big on a lab-grown future. 35% of all meat uh, could be cultivated by 2040. Um, so meat is a $1.3 trillion industry right now, so that's pretty enormous. Whether the thought of this arguably lower gilt meat grosses you out or whets your appetite, it might be appearing on our shelves in the not-too-distant future.